Night was slowly falling upon the small farm in Iowa. Two men were sitting on a terrace illuminated by a ceiling lamp. They were playing cards, exclaiming with excitement every now and then. To make the game more fun, the farmers warmed themselves up with alcohol, which there was a lot of on the table. The men were about 50 years old, and the hair on their temples had already turned gray. At some point, one of the players got rather tipsy and said, you know, Chris, I told my soon-to-be daughter-in-law this afternoon that my son has another woman on the side. Chris looked at him in bewilderment and asked, I don't get it, Charles. What do you mean another woman? Why is he even getting married then? The wedding's tomorrow. Charles had a good laugh in response and said, What is there not to get? Another woman is another woman. Simple as that. Stefan has a mistress. Didn't you know? Doesn't matter. It's all going to be fine. Chris looked reproachfully at his interlocutor and felt uncomfortable. He was extremely displeased that a man whom he considered a friend had committed such a vile act. Therefore, barely keeping it together long enough to finish the game, Chris came up with some kind of an excuse and went home. Charles remained sitting at the table, taking a sip of whiskey every now and then, and when the alcohol had completely clouded the farmer's mind, he got up from the table and went into the house, swaying from side to side. Having deliberately hurt his son's fiance, the man didn't feel any remorse, as he didn't even have a conscience at all. Thus, as he lay down in bed beside his peacefully sleeping wife, Charles smiled and thought that everything turned out just fine. The man knew that if something happened, Stefan would understand and wouldn't condemn his father, since his mistress was the daughter of a wealthy businessman. Moreover, Charles was well aware that Stefan's fiancée had no parents and there would simply be no one to stand up for her in any case. So, as he drifted off to sleep, the dastardly farmer didn't worry about Samantha giving him any trouble. And thus, what he wanted the most was to humiliate the hated daughter-in-law, whom he considered unworthy of his son. Stefan and Samantha met at one of the undergraduate student parties, the young people were both in their senior year of college and were about the same age. Of course, the naive and romantic young woman didn't immediately fall for Stefan. Samantha was in no hurry to start a relationship, rightly believing that first she needed to get settled in life and only then think about starting a family. But Stefan had a slightly different opinion on this matter, which was based on the financial assistance of his farmer parents. Despite attending the university, the young man wasn't particularly smart and loved living his life way beyond his means, spending his parents' money. Unfortunately, the opposites often attract in life, and the upcoming wedding of Stefan and Samantha was yet another proof of that fact. Many of the woman's friends and acquaintances said that Stefan wasn't a good match for her. But Samantha, nevertheless, blindly believed in the sincerity of her fiancé's feelings and was getting ready for the wedding. Trust me, you're making a big mistake. Stefan won't make you happy, her friend Jessica said to Samantha. Unfortunately, when Samantha finally realized how wrong she was about her boyfriend's family, it was already too late. The fact was that Stefan's parents disliked their future daughter-in-law from the first time she set foot in the Carter family home. Stefan's father was especially against this relationship because deep down, he dreamed that his son would marry a woman from a wealthy family. I don't even want to see this poor orphan. I swear to God, I will make her regret that she ever even crossed the threshold of my house, Charles Carter once said. But since Stefan didn't want to break up with Samantha, the elderly farmer decided to humiliate his future daughter-in-law on the eve of the wedding. Having shared the bad news with Samantha, Charles Carter was hoping to ruin her mood for at least several months to come. That was why the farmer told her his son's secret, that he was having an affair with a rich woman. The only problem was that, unlike Stefan, she was already married. The farmer knew that after the public announcement of the wedding, Samantha wouldn't dare to change her mind and leave Stefan. After the unpleasant conversation with her future father-in-law, Samantha was in tears and went to see her friend Jessica, who hugged her and tried to calm her down. Don't cry, dear. My advice to you, run away from that farm. It doesn't matter that it's your wedding tomorrow. Start a new life, as far away from them as possible. 
Let Stefan and his father look for another bride, Jessica exclaimed. At first, the poor woman felt so betrayed that she even thought about ending her life. But when Samantha cried out all the tears and her eyelids became swollen and red, she decided that she won't give up so easily. No, Jessica, I won't run away. I need something else. Something that will make Stefan and his family reconsider their outlook on life. But I'll need your help to do it, Samantha said, furrowing her brows with determination. But you have a wedding tomorrow. What about... Jessica objected timidly, but her friend didn't even let her finish her question, giving her a meaningful look. The next morning, the final preparations were in full swing at the Carter family home. All the farm workers were dressed in their best clothes, and Charles was in an excellent mood, as he had already had a drink for breakfast. Well, that's it. Today, Stefan is getting married, and everything will fall into place, and the incident with his fiancée will be forgotten like a nightmare. The farmer thought, rejoicing that everything was working out so well. The ceremony was scheduled for lunchtime, but many of the guests arrived much earlier. Dressed in his best costume, Stefan impatiently walked around the room, waiting for the bride to appear any minute. Well, where is that bride of yours? Couldn't she have made it on time to her own wedding? Penelope Carter asked irritably, looking reproachfully at her son. But Samantha still wasn't there, and many of the guests had already begun to grumble with displeasure. And when it seemed that the bride had simply forgotten about her own wedding, her agitated friend Jessica burst into the farmer's house. Help! Someone help! Samantha drowned in the river. The woman screamed, stammering at every word. What do you mean drowned? said Mr. Carter, turning pale and sobering up in an instant. Immediately after Jessica's words, most of those guests, including Stefan, ran out into the street and rushed to the river. As the unfortunate groom approached the pier, he saw a note pinned to the trunk of a young willow. Stefan's legs were shaking. He stepped closer and took the note. Running his eyes over it, the man turned pale and then decided to read it aloud. I, Samantha Hill, have voluntarily ended my life because Stefan Carter, with the help of his father, had been cheating on me and deceiving me all this time. When Stefan finished reading, the guests shuddered and the groom's father began to deny everything. No, no, it's all lies. There was no such thing. It's all this crazy woman's wild imagination. Charles shouted, agitated. But the words of Mr. Carter didn't have much of an effect on the guests, and even his best friend Chris made a skeptical face. Having realized that the wedding was off, the guests sat down at the tables and started eating throwing condemning glances at Charles and his son now and then. Thus, through the fault of Stefan's blabbermouth father, the wedding turned into a wake. Shivering under the hostile looks of his guests, Charles drank one drink after the other, but for some reason, the alcohol didn't seem to be working. By late evening, after drinking a huge amount of whiskey, the tipsy farmer finally got up from the table and went home to take a rest. Swaying from side to side, like a sailor on a stormy sea, Mr. Carter walked up the path leading to the house. Everything that happened that day took its toll on the man. He suddenly fell ill and, gasping for air, slowly sank to the ground. One of the guests immediately called an ambulance. Fortunately, thanks to the paramedics, the farmer survived. Taking Charles's wife aside, his attending physician said, you know, Mrs. Carter, your spouse should drink less alcohol. Otherwise, he won't live for even five more years. It's very likely that all the alcohol he drank yesterday is what caused his heart attack. Penelope Carter was very embarrassed by the doctor's speech and gave him a barely perceptible nod. Then, sighing sadly, Penelope and Stefan went into Charles' room. He lay on the bed, out from all the sleeping pills and other meds he was on. Get better, Dad, Stefan whispered, touching his father's hand. At that moment, the door opened, and none other than Samantha appeared on the threshold. There are no words to describe the effect her appearance had on the people who had nearly become her family. 
Her unexpected resurrection sent Stefan and his mother into a fit of rage. What the? Why would you stage your own death, you piece of trash? What did we ever do to you to deserve it? Asked Penelope Carter indignantly. What did you ever do to me? You have the audacity to ask me that? You've been bullying me all this time, and your son has been cheating on me. All I'm sorry about is that I didn't leave your vile family sooner, Samantha said with fervor. The young woman looked incredibly angry as she berated her ex-fiance and his mother. Having told Charles's relatives everything she thought about them, Samantha left the room, loudly slamming the door behind her. The truth was that she already had a plane ticket in her purse. She was going to New York, the city of her dreams. Following the advice of her friend, Samantha decided to start a new life with a clean slate. It is worth saying that the determined young woman fulfilled her plan in the shortest time. She got a job as a manager in a trading company, where thanks to her determination and hard work, she quickly climbed the career ladder. At one of the corporate parties, Samantha met a nice young man who later became her loving and faithful husband. Meanwhile, fate made the Carter family pay for all they did. Despite the fact that Charles recovered from his heart attack, his health was no longer the same as before, even though the man did give up alcohol, afraid of getting another heart attack. His unfortunate son Stefan married twice, each time leaving his wife with the child for the sake of yet another mistress. Ultimately, such a dissolute lifestyle led the man to start drinking heavily and completely lose any motivation to work on the development of the farm. As for Samantha, she prefers not to think about what happened to her on the farm in Iowa because she is busy raising her own little son with her beloved husband.